I always thought that the A7S III would be the perfect underwater video camera with its insane low light performance, 4K slow motion capabilities and improved in-camera stabilization. With my new housing from Seafrox, I pretty much unlocked all its potential. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Bernard and welcome to the channel. For today's video, I'll be reviewing the A7S III underwater housing from Seafrox. Coming from the A7 III housing, there are some upgrades of which I'm very excited about as they are total game changers. Let's take a look at everything that is new. The first prominent change is this added knob at the front and this is the main thing that I'm excited about. This allows you to control the front dial of your Sony camera. The previous housings for the A7 III and the A7R IV lacked this feature and it was one of the bigger shortcomings. I did figure out how to get around this limitation and I shared it here in this video. Do check it out if you're using the A7 III because unfortunately, this housing is exclusively for the A7S III. With this added knob, we now have full manual control of the camera except the joystick, which to be honest, isn't a big deal. The second change, which is a subtle one, is the cap on the vacuum pump system port. There is now an added groove that allows you to use a tool to tighten or loosen the cap. It can get challenging to use your hands to unscrew this when your hands are wet, so this is a very welcome addition. Of course, this is only relevant if you own the VPS100 pre-dive vacuum leak check system and I'll talk more about that in a bit. Another change, which is not a visible one, is the size or cutting of the opening. With the old housing, it was pretty easy to fit the A7 III in. With the A7S III housing, it is a tighter fit and it seems to require more effort to insert or remove your camera. It can be seen as a good thing I guess, knowing that your camera is very snug in the housing and won't shift and cause you to lose control of any buttons. But with that said, that was never a problem for the A7 III housing. The fourth change is the reinforced metallic bottom plate. This change is not really relevant to me, but those who use the pistol grip would definitely appreciate it. The last change, which also isn't really relevant to me, is that you now have a new way to trigger your flash. Apart from the synchro cable port, you now have the new fiber optic port. To be honest, I don't really know how either of this works because I have never used strobes and I use video lights instead. And I'm guessing that most of the A7S III users wouldn't be using this camera for photos. Anyways, those are the changes to the housing's body. And although they may not be many, the user experience is significantly improved. Now, I want to briefly go through the key standout points of this housing. I did mention them at an in-depth level in my previous reviews, so you can check them out here if you want to. I would summarize them here because we still have other topics to get to in this video. Firstly, the price of this housing can't be beat. Starting from 590 USD, you can bring your camera underwater. There is no other underwater housing options at this price point and the next tier will cost you double the price. Another thing that I really appreciate is that despite adding more features to the housing, they kept the price similar to their older housings when they were first released. However, the older A7 III housings are on sale now and they are slightly cheaper than A7S III housing. Hopefully, they will refresh their older lineup and include the new features. The second thing I love about the Seafrox housing is that they are compact and lightweight. I know that I mentioned in my previous video that they are big and bulky, but that was before I tried out housings from other brands. In comparison, Seafrox housings are relatively lightweight and compact and I'll never take that for granted again. The third thing I really appreciate about the Seafrox housing is how ergonomic it is. I would still highly recommend that you use this housing with a camera tray because it is buoyant and probably bigger than your hands. But in a situation that you find yourself having to go handheld, there are grooves cut into the housing and that makes it rather ergonomic and easy to use. Last but not least, I like that the design is very thoughtful. Most of the buttons are very clearly marked so you know its functions. Even if you were handling the housing for the very first time, I think that you will find it very intuitive. I have shared my list of pros, now let's talk about the cons. My biggest dislike of this housing is the opaque back door. After having experience using a housing with a fully transparent bag, I really appreciate being able to have full vision of what is going on inside my housing. If there was even a droplet of water, I would be able to detect it immediately. My second issue with this housing is the build quality. 
Just to clarify, I am not saying that this housing is poorly built. It's just that it feels kinda cheap in the hands, but I guess I can't really complain, considering that it is being sold at a really affordable price, but I just wish it could be better. For example, they have their sorted line for the A6000 series, which looks better built with the metal hinge lock and all. That housing is also rated to 60 meters, so I'm guessing that it is better built. I honestly don't understand why they're not bringing that lineup to the full frame cameras when full frame cameras are more expensive and more premium. I would totally go for that instead. And with regards to build quality, in my experience, the front element of the lens port is quite delicate and can accumulate scratches if not careful. At least, it is good to know that it can easily be changed when scratched. I personally have done so before for my previous housing and the process is quite simple. I just wish that a better material could be selected for the front element to make it more scratch resistant and I wouldn't mind paying extra for that. Other than that, honestly, I've had a very pleasant experience using the Seafrox housing for the past 3 years and I will gladly continue doing so. I know that some might have their qualms about bringing their expensive cameras underwater with a budget housing and to be honest, I had my concerns too. Back then, I was using the A7 III with the 16-35 f4. It wasn't exactly a cheap setup but it also wasn't crazily expensive so the risk seemed well worth it. Now, there is more at stake considering that I'm planning to bring the A7S III underwater. It really helps that I have an incident-free experience with my old Seafrox housing and it has helped build up my confidence in their products. However, to be extra cautious, I decided to get the VPS-100 pre-dive leak check system. It is very straightforward to use but I was surprised how much effort it takes. To check if your housing is leak free, you have to manually pump the air out. It takes quite a while before the red light turns green. Also, after the light turns green, you have to screw on the cap and leave it there for about 30 minutes if possible to ensure that there isn't any leak. It is possible for the light to turn green but turn back to red after a few minutes if there is a small leak so do take note of that. It is also very important to screw back the cap of the port for the vacuum test system properly after you are done with the test before your dive. There is a possibility of human error here and it might cause a leak even though the rest of your housing is fine. In a nutshell, this pre-dive leak check system works but it takes time and effort and I recommend that you do it before each trip and each time you change lens ports. I don't think you will need to do it between dives if your setup doesn't change. The next thing I want to talk about is the new lens port that Seafrox offers which is the 4 inch dome port. Previously, their smallest offering for dome ports was the 6 inch version and side by side, you can see the size difference. With this new option, you can get the best of both worlds. You can take awesome over and under shots with a relatively compact setup. This will make travelling with the housing so much more convenient and reinforce my point on the Seafrox housing being light and portable. If you want to find out which lens port you should pick that will best suit your needs, stay tuned because I have a video coming out comparing most of their lens ports. Do subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss that. To summarize this video, the updates to the Sony Seafrox housing are a huge welcome but I hope they will continue doing more as there is still room for improvement. Also, I will be much more confident about using my A7S III underwater with my new pre-dive leak check system. If you guys do end up getting a Seafrox housing, there are a few videos that I recommend you to check out on Seafrox YouTube channel. Videos like the first time setup guide and how to maintain your Seafrox housing are super useful videos to help avoid beginner mistakes. I have also included links on where you can purchase this housing in the description below. And in case you guys are wondering, those are not affiliate links and this is not a sponsored video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. That's it for today, it's a wrap!